Dotted north to south of the Pacific and Indian Ocean is the beautiful subregion of Oceania, known as Polynesia, made up of over 1,000 of the most beautiful and indeed intriguing islands. Some of the most puzzling ruins on Earth can be found here, upon some of the most remote islands of this enormous chain. The most well-known being Rapa Nui, or Easter Island, with its iconic enormous Moai statues, an incredible and extremely remote place, one that was once home to some of the most resilient and luckiest souls on Earth. For to land upon these remote shores, all those years ago, instead of perishing in the deep blue, could be seen as a one-in-a-million chance occurrence. Shipwrecked mariners from all over the world, marooned upon an island littered with enormous, unexplainable ancient statues, once hewn from the solid bedrock and moved across the island using as yet unexplained technologies. And although Eastern Island takes up nearly all of the public spotlight, there is another island, an equally confusing, amazing counterpart. Known as Temahua Tahua, it is located upon the island Nuku Hiva, the largest of the Marquesas Islands within French Polynesia, whose once ancient inhabitants lived within a crater of an ancient volcano upon the island. Temahua Tahua is littered with puzzling statues, possibly as ancient as the Moai, yet they are clearly of a much more peculiar subject. The earliest archaeological evidence of human inhabitation of Temahua Tahua is estimated to be around 2,000 years ago, yet many suspect these statues may be far older. An apparent altar for worship of a reptilian deity. Did the inhabitants of this ancient island once encounter aliens? Who were these statues intended to depict? It is highly intriguing that this extremely peculiar island should be found in a similar location to Easter, and although the Moai do appear to be human, we still do not know who or what was capable of shifting such enormous lumps of rock all those years ago. In fact, even with modern technology, we cannot shift such statues without damaging them. Within known human history, Temehua Tahua was the ancestral home of, of Queen Vakehu, the last queen of the Tahui, the ancient people who once lived upon Nuku Hiva. She successfully reunited the two halves of a once divided tribe, subsequently becoming their queen. The Marquesas Islands were settled by Polynesians around 200 BC and have cultural links with many other Polynesian peoples across the Pacific. Yet the origins of these alien-esque statues remains a perplexing mystery. Are these really the depictions of ancient aliens? And if not, why go to such effort in creating them? Temahea Tahua is undoubtedly an amazing place one which deserves far more attention. The ancient ruins of Giza, perhaps the most incredible of them all, and possibly the clearest displays of academic conspiracy, with much of the most puzzling of areas all but closed off, away from public view. An attempt to stifle controversial questions, which inevitably arise from such baffling ancient wonders. However, this attempt to obscure the greatest aspects of ancient Giza just fans the flames of curiosity. For when one realizes that much of ancient Egypt is being actively covered up, so-called officials avoid any obligation to explain the methodology. Behind many constructions found on the plateau, structures and relics, which to this day, escape any logical explanation. Once one accepts this reality, one begins to wonder what unspoken motivation there could be to ardently hide these sites' true characteristics. We have in the past covered many areas of ancient Giza which cannot be explained. Many people are aware of the issues surrounding the construction of the pyramids and the largely exposed void in modern understandings. However, this conundrum is but one among a smorgasbord of highly intriguing yet no less mystifying features hidden in plain sight all over the plateau. The basalt floor, 
which still contains volumes of tool marks, evident of high-precision, high-rotation ancient power tools. The gigantic megalithic blocks, each sunk flat, level with the base of the pyramids, which, although walked over by millions, have been largely overlooked by all. Some of these blocks, forming the immediate foundations of the pyramids, are similar in size to the pregnant woman of Baalbek, which is estimated to weigh some 1,000 tons. Additionally, all of these features, according to mainstream teachings, were created by the ancient Egyptians, a civilization we claim merely re-inhabited the site, like many others around the world. It is a fitting hypothesis, which if indeed the case, then all said tasks were undertaken and masterfully accomplished with nothing more than a set of soft copper tools. A clearly illogical hypothesis, disproven in many ways, one of which is by the main pink Aswan granite relics still in existence all over Egypt, which were all simply impossible to have created with just copper chisels, and our next artifact of interest is of no exception. This imposing altar was found at the west end of a passage, just outside the northern wall of the temple of King Amenemhat I. Originally, it is presumed that the altar once stood in the open court of the temple, with its roughly shaped lower part suggesting that it was sunk into the ground. A rectangular libation basin is carved into the top of the altar, as well as representations in flat relief of an offering mat containing two libation basins and three loaves of bread, the middle one incised with the king's throne, with the name Horus added, with the phrase, may he be given life forever, uncannily similar to long live the king, but I digress. At the center of the altar's front side, the incised birth name of the king Amenemhat, with rows of approaching fertility figures who are designated by inscriptions as personifications of gnomes, regional governorates of northern and southern Egypt. It is undoubtedly an incredible ancient artifact, one carved with such precision and artistic accuracy, and upon some of the hardest stone on earth, to suggest this was achieved with soft chisels is to us absurd. Who made the altar of Amenemhat? How did they carve it? An exquisite ancient relic, which is, like much of ancient Egypt, highly compelling. Sardinia is undoubtedly one of the most overlooked areas of ancient interest to be found anywhere in the world. Located within the Mediterranean, it's a large Italian island with 2,000 kilometers of coastline, dotted with sandy beaches. The interior, however, contains some of the most heavily concentrated ancient ruins to be found anywhere. Thousands of structures, known as naragis, litter the island. Stone structures masterfully shaped like beehives, often with domed roofs, that from inside reveal the mastery of the original constructors with the largest and oldest of which, known as Sunuraji in Barumini. The Nuraji is a unique feature of the island of Sardinia that, according to mainstream academia, were constructed during the Nuragic Age, between 1900 and 730 BC. However, the Nuragi is not the only compelling ancient ruin to be found upon the island, that regardless of the mundane academic explanation for their origins, are indicative of an enigmatic, highly capable, lost group of ancient beings, locally said to have been of tremendous size. Known as the Giant's Graves, or Tumba de Gigantes locally, the legends that can be found still circulating within the local population tell of giants having once been responsible for these structures, with the graves supporting such claims due to their enormous scale. However, predictably, Academics argue that the size of these tombs were merely due to them being mass graves, although any remains from these supposed neurogic inhabitants, dated to the Bronze Age, remain elusive. Additionally, many of these giant graves, which number around 800, are constructed using enormous megalithic stones many tons in weight. This use of enormous stones is strangely absent from the 2,000 or so neurogi that are instead constructed from more manageably sized stones. However, 
Interestingly, legends in other areas of the Med, such as the Naveta Destodomes found in Menorca, also built with manageable stones, shares these legends of giants having once been responsible. A structure built for human habitation by supposed giants using similarly sized stones as the Naraja. Gantia, found on yet another Mediterranean island called Gozo, shares these same local legends of giant builders. Is it mere coincidence that all of these ancient ruins are found within the same global vicinity as each other? An extremely ancient ritual, still practiced within Sardinia, predating Christianity by a considerable time, could hold clues to the construction of these giants' graves. A carnival so old, the story behind its purpose has been lost throughout the ages. Depicting monsters of giant proportions, often covered in cowbells and adorned with horns or goat's heads, these monsters march through the local town controlled as they go by human-looking counterparts, named the Izohadores. Known as the Carnival of the Mamuthonas, what exactly the Mamuthonas are, or indeed possibly were, is also lost to history. Although these beasts, who grunt and stomp through the town center, are tethered and controlled by the Izohadores as they go. Were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? Were they utilized for their strength and size by these Izoadoras to build the inexplicable structures still found within Sardinia? Are these widespread yet openly shared local legends passed down from generation to generation pertaining to giants having once been responsible for Sardinia's intriguing ruins a true story? With the visually stunning ancient ritual still preserved by the Sardinians, clues to the origins of the giant's graves and indeed the Naraj's? We find the spectacle practiced by the Sardinians, along with their local legends surrounding the giant's graves, highly compelling.